My name is Jared Ambo and I'm a criminal defense attorney and an expert in forensic DNA interpretation. We're here to talk about DNA evidence and DNA in the courtroom and specifically how to meet the challenge of DNA being offered against your client. In order for us to understand DNA, in order for us to understand the process of DNA analysis, we have to talk about some terms and define a little bit about the molecule itself. We have to understand what DNA is. If I said to you DNA, generally people say, oh, that's the genetic code of human beings. And they're right. Or that's the material, the genetic material inside the nucleus of a cell. Again, bingo, right? I mean, that's what DNA is. It's a, it, we even know what it looks like, right? If I showed you a picture of DNA, that's what DNA looks like, right? I mean, it's a, it's a double helix, a twisted ladder like structure of molecules that, you know, kind of makes us who we are, right? But we have to take a little more granular look, a little more, a little closer look at the DNA molecule itself in order to understand how the analysis is done, right? And why do we have to do that? Well, so I tell a story sometimes about, about measurement. Um, if I made a bet with you that a thousand dollars, I'll give you a thousand dollars if you let me shoot a bullet in the center of your head, but I move to the left a quarter of a yard. If you didn't know what a yard was, you couldn't take that bet, right? If you had never heard the term yard, uh, if I said, I'll do it, uh, you know, a quarter from a shoe. <laughs> well, I mean, I think I know how big a shoe, long a shoe is, but I'm not sure, right? You have to know what distance are we talking about? How much is a yard? How long is a yard, right? If you'd never heard the word yard, you'd have to know how long it was. If it was a difference, difference, distance between Miami and Chicago, rock and roll, you can do it all day long. I wouldn't even know you were there, right? That's miles away. On the other hand, if a yard was the length of a hot dog, well then I'm gonna get shot in the middle of the forehead, right? So I can't take that bet. I've gotta know what we're talking about. And when we measure the DNA molecule, it's similar, right? We measure it in, in the number of nucleotide bases, right? These fragments that we look at are measured in nucleotide bases. 100, 200, 300 base pairs long. Well, what does that mean? Like that, that's just a thing that exists out there that you don't understand. And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna take a look at the molecule itself we're gonna get a sense about the, how that thing is formed or the, the sort of formation of the organization of it. And in so doing, we're gonna get a better understanding of the size or length or measurement of these fragments, these segments that we're testing uh, when we do DNA analysis. Okay, so to begin with, let's take a look at the large scale structures of DNA. The, the large scale structures that we see in DNA are chromosomes, right? The chromosomes are the organization of the DNA inside the nucleus. And oftentimes these chromosomes are not, you can't see them except during cell division, right? But we know where they are because we've mapped now the entire human genome, right? The entire DNA molecule. And though there are 23 chromosomes in the DNA of a human being, they're not separate pieces of DNA. It's just one long strand of DNA kind of bunched up or gathered together in these structures that look like a little X, right? These chromosomes, right? And these structures have substructures or sub organizations, smaller and smaller pieces of organization. And we go from the chromosome all the way to the double helix. And we go through what's called supercoiling and coils and histone molecules. And essentially it's the wrapping of DNA inside the chromosome in a phone-like coil of phone-like coils of wrappings around histone proteins of the DNA molecule, of the twisted ladder, okay? And so DNA is a very complex, very, uh, very, very long, but very complex sort of bunched together molecule. And we go to test these parts of this molecule, right? Like little sections of this molecule when we test it. Well, let's look at what those sections are. Let's look at the component parts of those sections so that we can begin to define what it is we're looking at. The small scale structure of DNA is made up of the nitrogenous bases we were talking about, adenine, guanine, cytosine, thymine, A, G, C, T, right? And the match pairs, the base pairs as they match up their comp with their complementary pair, right? A is to T's and C's to G's. Those molecules, as we can see, are uh, connected to a sugar base and a phosphorus backbone. That sugar and phosphorus make up the, the outside ladder of the DNA, right? Those are the things that make up the backbone of the DNA. Those bonds between those molecules are very strong. In the center of the ladder, the connection between the, the nitrogenous bases are weak and they're easy to open up and close and open and close. And that opening and closing is used in the DNA analysis process. Okay, now that we understand the structure of DNA, why does that make a difference in DNA analysis? Well. 
when we do when we conduct DNA analysis we use enzymes to cut the sections or segments of the DNA that are of interest to amplify DNA in an analysis related to going to court or related to evidence uh, related to forensic DNA evidence and and the way that we do that is particular kinds of enzymes recognize portions of that molecule. They recognize a string of those nitrogenous bases. They recognize uh, sort of like an alphabet, right? Like a word, but a word of 20 or 30 of these letters, A, G, C, or T, repeated in a certain manner. And, and an enzyme comes in and says, okay, this is the, this is the beginning fragment of this, this you know, piece that I want. This is, I recognize this as the beginning. I recognize this is the end, and then there's some stuff in the middle, right? And the stuff of the middle is what we know um, as being polymorphic, right? And we'll talk about that in a minute, why that stuff in the middle is what makes a difference. But there's a lot more of this fragment that exists, right? There's a lot more of this fragment of the DNA molecule that's, that is copied over and over again in this analysis process. And so understanding the molecular structure of the molecule and understanding how those fragments differ in the way that we measure them, that they differ only by molecules. They differ by a very small amount. It's very important to understanding the accuracy or the uh, reliability of the testing that we are doing. And so understanding the DNA molecule as it is and understanding these fragments is fundamental to our understanding of DNA analysis.